what is going on guys welcome to your 55th Java tutorial and in this tutorial we're going to be getting into polymorphism a little bit and also talking about or building something called a polymorphic array to uh, demonstrate why polymorphism is actually useful and it's a pretty confusing topic and trust me there are going to be a lot of tutorials on this so if you're not quite sure um, what's going on by the end of this tutorial then I promise you in a couple tutorials you'll be a pro on polymorphism so in order to uh, demonstrate polymorphism, we first need to build a computer program that uses inheritance in one way or another. So what I did is I set up, and you can probably tell this if you watched my last tutorials, I'm going to have a super class called food. In this tuna class and pot pie class, since they're both types of food, they're going to inherit all the methods and variables in this food class. So the food is a super class and the tuna and pot pie are subclasses. I already um, put extends food, and what extends food does is use an inheritance to inherit everything from food. But you should know that already if you uh, watch my other tutorials, just for the people who just started. Um, that's what I'm doing. So now let's go ahead and build a basic method called eat in food. So void eat won't take any parameters, and what it will do is pretty much go system print a line, pretty much system out print line. And it's gonna say, did I get that right? System out print line. Um, this food is great. And now, what tuna and pot buy does? Anytime you call the eat method, it would say this food is great. Now that's nice and all, but another thing about polymorphism, and I'm just gonna do this for demonstration purposes. We can overwrite the eat method that if we put it in the tuna class and called it, it'll say this tuna is great now. And let's just do that one more time with pot pie. This pot pie is great. So even though it's inheriting the eat method from the food class, we overwritten it or overwrote it with putting a new eat method inside the tuna and pot pie class. So now when you call the eat method in tuna, it says this tuna is great. And now when you call the eat method in pot pie, it says this pot pie is great. So now let's get into polymorphism. Now that we have a program that uses inheritance. What polymorphism is, is pretty, well, first let me describe to you how we built um, reference variables and objects before. We did something like tuna bucky equals new tuna. And we didn't really think about what we were doing, we just did it because that's how we were taught. But if you're wondering, all right, why do I need to put tuna right here and tuna right here as well. Shouldn't I only have to put it once to know that I'm talking about that class? Well, the thing is, well, first let me go over what these are. This right here, Bucky, is the reference variable. That means whenever you refer to the variable Bucky, you're referring, you are referring to controlling the stuff in this class or object, which is tuna. And this pretty much is the data type. So it can control the tuna data type and this object is of type tuna but another cool thing is you can do this and this pretty much is the intro to pot sorry this pretty much is the intro to polymorphism not only is tuna of the tuna type but tuna is also of the food type so what you can do is some pretty cool things anything that inherits from the super class which is tuna or excuse me the super class is food can be assigned to bucky for example tuna since it inherits from food can be assigned to bucky pot pie since it inherits from food can be assigned to bucky and you're saying all right that's nice and all i can assign this that and the other thing but why actually would this be useful in any kind of way well the answer to that I will do one thing which you guys probably need and that's an example. The quickest example and the most clear thing I can do is build something called a polymorphic array. And this stores objects of different classes in pretty much the superclass type. So let's go ahead and say we have food and that's the type. And let's go ahead and make an array object named Bucky. And we'll set this equal to new food so now we have an array and it's called Bucky and it's of the food type and remember like I said 
since we have something of the food type, it can hold um, objects of tuna and pot pie. So for example, um, Bucky Zero can hold objects of new pot pie, just like that. And we'll set Bucky One, which is a reference variable, and we'll set this equal to the object of new tuna. And you're saying, all right, well, that's still great. You have one variable that can hold an object and another vari variable that can hold an object. Yeah, these variables might be of the food class, but I don't see why this is useful still. Well, just wait a minute and trust me. You'll see why in a little bit. One um, reason for using polymorphism is to use polymorphic arrays. And that would be something like this. You loop through this array, and in essence what it does is it calls each method of this class right here. So let's go ahead and type for um, int x equals 0, and just put something like x is less than 2. You can also put array length, um, but you know, you don't want to. And do plus plus x, and now what we can do is say something like this. Um, Bucky x e dot eat. And what this is going to do is loop through each one of these objects and call the eat method. So it's going to loop through the first um, object, which was assigned Bucky zero pot pie, and it's going to call pot pie dot eat, which is say this pot pie is great. The next thing it's going to do is loop through the tuna object, which is tuna dot eat, and then it says this tuna is good. So then you save yourself the trouble of making um, a new object called tuna, tuna object, um, then you go tuna.e, and then you have to make an object, and you have to call each method, and I just got rid of my curly brace right there. So what this pretty much does is loop through each of your objects and calls the eat method for each one. Don't believe me? I'll run it right here. It says, this pot pie is great, this tuna is great. Bam. How easy is that? So that is pretty much your basics, the polymorphic polymorphic array. You can assign different objects to variables as long as this reference variable is of the superclass type. And that way, instead of having to build a new object for each one of your, uh, you know, having to build a new object every time you want to use a method from that thing, you can build one um, reference variable of the superclass and assign it to objects of the subclasses and just loop through them with a polymorphic array. So how cool is that? And I know it's really confusing at first, but once I show you some other examples aside from polymorphic arrays, you're going to understand um, exactly how to use this, how it works, and you'll be a pro at it. So for now, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and if you have any questions, just leave me a comment and I'll try to answer them. So thank you guys for watching again, and I will see you next time.